Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches. And in this video, I will be talking about um, a crochet pattern that I came across. Um, this is on a blog. I'm looking at my computer right here. Um, the blog, the crochet site is called Crochet Dreams with a Z. Trendy Crochet Patterns. And it is free to go to this website. I'll put a link in the description to the website. And on it, it has a free child's crochet poncho pattern, Sea Breeze Poncho. Um, I actually really liked this pattern. Up until now, I actually lost the pattern that I was using. And I was, at that time when I was making these ponchos for my second graders, I was making two rectangles and then I would lay them in some kind of like, I felt like some kind of crazy um, geometric pattern. And I would sew, I'd put two seams which would kind of leave it in a V in the front. Um, but it's been all, I didn't make any ponchos for my class last year. And then I had a little sister of a previous classmate who wanted a poncho. So I was like, you know what? Let me just find a new poncho pattern. I originally had found this on Ravelry and I could put a link in the description to that. Um, but it was gonna cost $3 through Ravelry. But then it said, you can go to this blog site and have it for free. Um, it is a very simple pattern to read. It's a two row repeat besides the initial chain. And the cool thing about this pattern is that um, she has you crochet in a shape in the shape of an L. So you do the first rectangle and then when you get to one row you stop and you go up. And so that way when you close up your poncho you only have one seam. Um, she uses a Karen Big Cake in order to make the poncho. This pattern is broken up into a multitude of sizes with all of the stitch counts, which I really liked. It was nice and easy, and it's broken up by the age. So you could make it for a two-year-old, a three to four-year-old, a five to six-year-old, seven to nine, 10 to 12, or a 14 or 16-year-old. And then it gives you the inches so that if you have a particularly small nine-year-old or a particularly big five-year-old, you can measure to see where, where you would like the hem from the neck to the base to how long you want it to be, and you can choose your poncho size from that. Most second graders are seven years old, and so I made it for a seven to nine year old so that she can wear it for two winters. Um, the other, and then all the pattern, um, whenever it gives you a stitch count, it has the initial size for the two year old first and then a parentheses and lists them in order. And also kind of nice is she did every other one bold. So that way it kind of reminded me that I was doing the fourth side. I'm sorry if you hear my extremely loud child because he is up there. Um, also it then broke out, broke it down to the number of yards you would need. So if you were making this for a two year old, you would need 600 yards. And if you were making this for a seven to nine year old, you would need approximately a thousand yards. And then it, it has one different stitch. Um, not a difficult stitch, but one that I had actually never done before a front post single crochet, which is just like a front post double crochet. So no big deal. Um, and she explains very thoroughly in the pattern how to do a front post single crochet. And then she even has a link to, I'm assuming, a tutorial on online video. Um, the pattern itself was very easy to read. There was only one part that I thought was a little strange that I changed. And obviously there's no harm. One of the row, one of the pattern, one of the sections has you start with a chain one and a single crochet in the first stitch, and then it says chain one. And then it's the repeat chain three, single crochet. And then from then on, it's chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet. Well, that first step, because she has you do a chain one, a single crochet and a chain one, you end up with four single crochet or four chains and you, you're just skipping three stitches. So at first I was doing it and then I was like, man, it just was a little baggier on that side because it was four chains instead of three. I just started not doing it. I felt fine with that. I don't see any effect in the finished product um, that for the first couple repeats I did the chain four and then from then on I was like eh 
I'm not going to do it. Um, she also has a really nice diagram to show you because once you've made your L shape, she then shows you how to sew or where to position the pieces in order to sew them together. Very clear. Um, the only thing that I did not do, and many of you won't be surprised by this, is I am not a fan of pom-poms. Um, pom-poms, fringe, ruffle, all that, hanging yarn bits. But particularly if it was for an adult, I probably would leave the pom-pom. But I have found that handmade pom-poms um, have a tendency to be broken by children because they're not careful with it. That's not in a child's nature. And if it gets caught on something or if it pulls, the pom-pom is going to come apart and then they're going to come to me and want it fixed. So I just left the pom-pom off. Okay, so I made my first poncho. Uh, it probably... I started it Friday night and finished it Saturday. I made it with Yarn B Sugar Wheel Plum Crazy. This, this um, it has 355 yards, which means this was 600, just around 750, maybe 800 or less yards. Um, it's 100% acrylic and it is variegated. I have this much of it left. Now, maybe this because for two reasons, and I'll tell you. I also did not single crochet all the way around the poncho when it was done. And then, like I said, it had some kind of like little tie that they wanted you to like weave in and hang those pom-poms on strings. I didn't do it. I just was trying to keep this as basic as possible in case I ended up having to make multiples of these in case the word goes out that I have made a poncho for someone and then I am making 19 more. Okay, I'm gonna show you the finished poncho. That's what it looks like. This is the Plum Crazy. It is variegated. I did not color control and you'll see that here on the back. For some reason, there's just this little bit here with the purple. I mean, it was just right in the middle of, do you see that in that dark purple? Just for some reason, that little bit. But I left it because I wasn't gonna go crazy. And then here was another section, just one little bit of dark. This is the back of the poncho, this is the front. I also used one of my fancy schmancy crochet society um, labels that said made with love. So this is plum crazy. Like I said, it used one full yarn skein and like 80% of the other. It probably could have used it all up if I would have gone around and then created the single crochet neckline with the pom-poms. I just did straight plain poncho. Uh, if you want to see, you know, go ahead, click on that link and you'll see what, how mine looks compared to the other one. I think it looks fine. I'm not sad at all about my decision. Um, then I decided to start another one because um, I initially was going to make it in your, uh, if you watched the previous video, I was going to make it with Karen Simply Soft. But the pattern called for a Karen Big Cake. So I wanted to make it true to what the pattern said. So that's why I used the, um, even though I didn't have a Karen Big Cake, I used the Sugar Wheel because it was pretty close to a Karen Big Cake. Um, I now started a second one with the Karen Simply Soft. It is coming up a little smaller. I'm not using the hook that's re recommended for the yarn. I'm using the hook recommended for the pattern. But the Karen Simply Soft is a smaller yarn. Um, I just have one more row to finish up here and then I will start. So this is how it starts with the rectangle. And then when you come back to do the next side, you stop right here, you go this much, and then you just keep going. You're making an L. Yeah, so this pattern was um, very simple. I like it. I'm going to save it to my favorites. So that way the next time, and I'm hoping I don't have to make a million of these. If I need another small child's poncho, I'm just going to make these. And as I've said before, even when the boys ask, I make the same poncho. I do not make them the special square or rectangle one. They get the same ponchos that I make all the girls and they don't, they don't care. Um, kids at this age don't know the difference. So yeah, I really recommend this pattern. It was amazing. Now, also on this website, there is a search feature at the top, uh, you know, has headings, home, crochet patterns, tutorials, and then about. Um, you can go ahead and there's other free patterns on this website. Um, so yeah, that is all for this video. Just a quick little feature of my poncho and the pattern I used. 
There is a playlist on my YouTube channel here where I will occasionally just make a quick 10, 15 minute video about a patterns that I make where I explain the things that I do different or how it's similar. So if you're wondering about other patterns, um, yeah, there are some others. You can go to that playlist and I think I talk, I say review patterns or patterns I've made. This one is called uh, Child Crochet Poncho Sea Breeze Poncho, but actually mine is plum or grape. Grape or plum poncho. And as you can see, there's only one seam in this because of the making it in the shape of the L. Whereas the ponchos I were making before, I had a seam here, and then I would have another one across the front. So that is why this is my new favorite poncho pattern. All right, thanks for um, watching. Thanks for liking and sharing my videos. And until the next video, happy crafting. Bye.